Hello guys, this is Tina. In this video, we're gonna talk about the join fetch and uh, use it to also join a collection and uh, fetch the result, return the result. But if join fetch is different from the join, okay? <clears throat> The join we talked before, it's uh, the joined, it's like a person joined the phone numbers, right? And also the the phone numbers we are add into the result set. So we have to add a select person in order to filter, only give us the person type the query, right? But a join fetch, the join the part is not add in the result set. So when we're using join fetch, we don't need to have a select, okay? The other thing is <clears throat> also the related related uh, uh, entities will also be added into the entity manager cache, okay? Now let me show you what is what does the mean add into the entity manager cache. <clears throat> so take a look at this one. Uh, this demo here, join fetch. I just uh, copy from the join collection from last uh, video in the playlist. And uh, here everything runs successful, okay? And you will see the, uh, the, 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 the collection list, which will have the John Brown and Edward Tower. And now I make a small change, then you will see the problem. Okay, everything is changed. And here I have a select statement, right? So I will make something change. First, I will close the, I'm gonna close the previous, this entity manager. I want to make sure all the object here is detached. So when I make a query, I want to make sure all the query is not just hit the cache. It's gonna go to the database to fetch all the information, okay? So after I close, I have to re-get another entity manager, right? Get another entity manager and then begin, okay? That's the thing I did the first step. Second step, I remove this one. And now what I'm gonna do is I want to get all the things from the numbers, okay. okay. Too fast. This one is doing is uh, after I get the person list, I also I want to know all the information about the phone numbers. The get numbers is to retrieve the phone numbers from the person. And uh, let me run and show you the problem, okay? Sorry. Okay, here, take a look at the SQL generated. So here, we are gonna have the first select statement, which is here, select distinct, right? And now, when I using p dot get a num, uh, probably it's better I have uh, another class, you will know where are they actually runs, okay? I should do this one first. Uh, no, uh, in this case, if we're using for each, it cannot see the behavior. We what we can do it. Uh, we can do like this way. And we we'll do like this way. Okay, like this. Okay, like this. Okay, let's run. Mm. Mm, I still prefer to using the loop, just the basic loop. You will see this one gonna be repeated, but uh, I wanna show you where the select actually being executed, okay. Oh, it's it finished, okay. So now let's take a look at 
After one, we have a selected statement. Here we have a selected statement, right? And uh, this selected statement is this one. Oh, no, this one, this one, this one. Select statement. And then we go to two. And you can see here between two and three. This is because in the result, we have uh, two object between two and three. You will see here have an extra select statement. Then it will give you result number. And uh, here also have another extra uh, select statement and give you a result. And think about it. If this person list contains 100 result, then when I try to get a numbers, every time when we do a loop, it's going to have uh, another select statement, right? So when I have 100 person list, and it's going to make 100 select number, this query to the database, plus one select for this person list. Do you get an idea? If you didn't get it, let me uh, draw a diagram for Let me draw for you, OK? And not this one. Let's do one more time. Hey, hold oh, this one, this one, this one. Okay. Hey, I'm gonna using this one, and I'm gonna create a new page for this one. So what's gonna happen? Yes. <clears throat> First, when we when we using uh this one, query dot get result list. Query. When we using query, yeah, come on. Give me this one. Give me this one, yeah. When I using query, the query two dot get result list. Okay, this one will make a select statement, right? It is gonna create a select statement to the database, right? Which is this piece, select a distinct the person, this one. And the result will give us what? The result will give us, uh, I'll put a result here, okay? This is a result returned by this one. The result gonna be, uh, in our case, gonna be, what, what's the what's the two person? Uh, jump around. And uh, add the word towers, okay. And uh, what's the problem of this one? Uh, uh, sorry, here no problem. Now I using this one, p dot get numbers, which is uh, p dot get numbers, okay. P dot get numbers from our output, it gonna make a, a select statement. So when I using John Brown dot get numbers here, it's gonna make a query, select a query, select a statement, select a query, and to fetch the phone number. And then now when I use a call p dot get numbers on the other word, this object, p dot get numbers again on this one when I loop this result set, right? And here we are also issue a select statement and to fetch the phone number related to the other word. So every time I using get a number, this request, it's gonna make a new query. Every time it's gonna make a new query. Okay, so if this result, if this result contains 100 or 1000, uh, 10,000, then when I do a loop on this, when I do a loop on this result set, and then I using get numbers on each of the element in the result set, every time it's gonna create a select statement. So this will create a n plus one problem. One means this one select, n means this here, gonna have n queries generated by Hibernate. It's gonna be slow down your performance a lot because you have lots of uh, small queries. And uh, when we talk about uh, optimization, we will talk about uh, more on this one. Today, just to show you a little bit, okay? 
And uh, to solve the problem, we have several ways. And uh, since we talk about join fetch, probably you already know the pro how to solve the problem using join fetch. And uh, when we're using join fetch, you don't need to have a select here because uh, join fetch join fetch doesn't include the collection into the result set. So there's no need for the select statement. And also we have to add a fetch here. While we're using join fetch, it won't make n plus one, n plus one queries. It will only make one query and also make sure the numbers are included in the uh, result, uh, not the result, in the cache in the first level cache. It is not in the result set, but they are already in the cache, okay? So when I retrieve numbers, it is only grab from the cache. It won't make a select statement to the database, okay? So what I change, just remove select and add a fetch here. So let's run. And you want to see this select statement, okay? You will only see one select statement. Very good, see here. Okay. After one, after one, we only has a one select statement. Okay. And uh, between two and three, see here, after that, there's no other select statement. So that's how join fetch works, which is uh, it first, uh, the collections the joined collections are not in the result set. So you don't need to have uh, uh, the select clause, okay, which is a select clause here before the from to filter, okay. And the second join fetch will solve the n plus one problem, which is the collection here will be in the uh, first level cache. When we using person dot get numbers, it won't make a query to the database. Instead, it just get the values from the cache for us. Okay. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. And if you have any question, you can leave a comment. And if you like my video, please share and subscribe. Thank you very much and see you next time. Bye bye.